ever stare down a super long tunnel and think, hey, that reminds me of a tiny shipworm? Huh? Yeah, me neither. But here's the thing about the humble shipworm. It can actually be likened to a tunneling machine. Now these guys might be small, but they're master tunnelers. Using sharp ridges on their shell, they scrape away at wood while secreting lime to line the inside of the tunnel, leaving a clear passageway behind. Which brings me here today. When I was an architecture student, Singapore was still a young nation. 20 years later, I'm clearly still not an architect, but Singapore has transformed. Since the nation's first five stations on the North-South Line opened in 1987, Singapore's rail transport network has expanded, not only above ground, but below it. How does it get done, especially tunnelling underground for all the new rail lines? Well, I'm here to meet the people who are building and shaping our built environment. Hello, and Lai. <laughs> this is Elvin Sim, Deputy Director at LTA who has worked on station and tunnel projects, including the Downtown Line, Thompson East Coast Line, and now the Cross Island Line. Well, tell me more about what we're looking at. This is the Keppel Station. This is one of the three stations that will be open in the year 2026. And when it's open, it will finally close the loop for the Circle Line. Ah, it will finally be a circle. It will. How do you create this world underground? I'll show you the machine that we use. So what we have here is what you call a tunnel boring machine. And we use such machines to build our underground MRT tunnels in Singapore. How big is a tunnel boring machine? Typically about 100 meters. Oh, that's really long. But the bulk of the work is done in the first 10 meters. What does this switch do? So what you have just activated is the cutter head switch. The tunnel boring machine is basically like a factory. When the machine gets pushed forward, it actually excavates the ground in front of it and it takes the excavated material back through the built tunnels and up to the surface. The second function of the machine is to build the tunnel. Prefabricated tunnel segments are transported to the front of the machine to be assembled into tunnel rings. How quickly does this move? So in soft ground conditions, we can achieve quite easily 20 meters per day. How do you know that the earth that you're going to be boring through is hard or soft? Come with me, I'll show you. Oh, they look like cereal dispensers. <laughs> Singapore, in spite of its relatively small size, it has got very diverse geology. This is the soil profile that we experienced on the Keppel Station. The top layers is actually comprises fill, which is sandy material, followed by marine clay, which is a bit of a toothpaste kind of a material. When you go slightly deeper at which the tunnel was being constructed, this is where we experienced Jurong formation. Are there certain types of soil that the tunnel boring machine would not be able to pass through? The answer is no. We conduct very comprehensive ground investigation studies and this gives us a very good appreciation of the ground that we are going to encounter. And we will design our tunnel boring machines specifically to deal with the ground conditions on the project. How do you ensure the safety of the structures above ground? When we are designing the tunnel alignment, we will try and avoid buildings or critical structures. Except it's not so simple when it comes to tunnelling between Harbourfront and Keppel stations as it runs under the existing Keppel Viaduct. Here's the Keppel Viaduct, and supporting it are foundations that were in the path of the tunnel alignment. For this particular tunnelling project, we had to tunnel through two of the Keppel Viaduct piers. This is Brian, a tunnelling engineer with LTA, and this is his first tunnelling project. Where exactly is this tunnel? The tunnel actually runs from Keppel Station over there, directly under this pier towards Cantonment Station. Because around us, you can see like many, 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 many piers. How come only two pier is yeah. affected? Exactly, it's like trying to thread the needle between all these piers to find the best alignment for the tunnel. Each piers are a foundation that takes the load of this structure. And when you tunnel under it, you have to work through the existing foundation. So the original foundation of this foundation has actually been kind of decimated by this tunnel boring machine, is it? That's correct, but in a very safe and controlled manner. Oh yeah, yeah I was just making it sound dramatic. <laughs> we did a process called underpinning. 
Underpinning is the process of creating a new supporting structure that allows us to alleviate the load from the existing foundation. Once that is done, we are now able to use the machine to bore through the existing piles. I would say what's really amazing is you did not have to stop traffic to yeah. do this. We only could do that because of the careful monitoring of the instruments that we have placed surrounding the pier as well as on the pier itself. When the tunnel is being excavated, monitoring ground movement is especially important because the pressure in the surrounding soil is reduced, causing the ground to settle. And before that happens, it is up to this man, Cheng Yi, to catch it. To ensure structural integrity and safety of road users, instruments were installed to monitor the road viaduct during the underpinning and tunneling works. This is the weirdest ruler I've ever seen in my life. Probably the biggest ruler you've seen in your life. Wow! We're measuring whether the ground sunk. So you just position it above here, and the barcode has to be facing over there. You take manual readings of the pier. These are taken daily, and if the tunnel is actually boring close to the piers, what we can do is increase the frequency to as much as four times daily. And today, it's my job. What? Huh? I think it's a bit too slanted. What we need to do is we got to make sure it's vertical. There's a bubble level here, like oh, that. Oh, right. Yeah. So this will ensure this is standing up straight. Good. Oh, we're done. Let's move on to the next settlement marker. OK, let me hold on to it. All right. Bubble level. Yup, that's good. You sure it's not saying it? really imagine doing this day in, day out. Why do you do what you do? I can say it's been a rewarding career, especially geotechnical engineering. When the Marina Coastal Expressway first opened, I saw an article which stated it's an architectural marvel. It's a lot more engineering than architecture because there was a lot of creative solutions, a lot of challenging problems that engineers solved for the Marina Coastal Expressway. That's an engineering marvel. Yes. So I want to go see more of your engineering marvels. All right, I think we should go down to the tunnels then. The mark of a well-constructed tunnel is that it's completely watertight. And this is the testament to a good workmanship. And how long does that last? All of our MRT infrastructure is built to stand for 120 years. Um, are we there yet? Wow, it's a good 2.4 kilometers. Ha! Huh? <laughs> Congratulations! You have now arrived at the cantonment station. Well, I have to say, this underground city is really quite amazing. It really connects us underground. So why do you do what you do? For us tunnel engineers, we liken our tunnels to the arteries of the nation. And you can see how the arteries of the nation actually improves the interconnectivity of the entire nation. And that gives me the motivation to want to come to work every single day. Are there a lot of tunnel engineers? There are a lot of tunnel engineers and it is my hope and my desire that we can inspire the next generation of tunneling engineers like Brian to join us and continue to build the arteries of the nation. I can't believe you made me walk from one station to another. But You're supposed to take the train, not walk it. Public transport is too often overlooked, but look at every major city around the world. Railway lines shape urban mobility, connecting residential areas with commercial hubs. We've all benefited from this increased connectivity and accessibility. And it is engineers like Elvin, Ryan and Chen Yi who ensure the safety of this maze of tunnels beneath our feet. Their dedication not only enhances the present-day transport network, but lays the foundation for the longevity of Singapore's infrastructure for generations to come.